Hey everybody, welcome back to Tantrum House Studio 3. Today we're going to do an overview video of the game coming to Kickstarter, Block and Key, from Inside Up Games. And don't forget that our overview videos are sponsored by our Kickstarter backers and by the creators of this game. <laughs> everybody, and welcome back to Tantrum House Studio 3. I'm Jonah Doom. And I'm Sarah Meadows. Today we're looking at Block and Key from Inside Up Games. It's from designer David Van Drunnen and art from Edu Valls. Yeah, this game is one to four players. It plays one because it has a solo mode, and it lasts about 20 to 40 minutes, just depending on your player count. This is coming to Kickstarter soon, so let's jump in and see how it plays. Each player starts with four key cards, two star, one sun, and one moon. Then is dealt one Enigma card face down, which will act as your in-game bonus. To start the game, the starting player places the core cube in the middle of the temple. Then all the players will draw three rocks from any row or column on the excavation site. On your turn, you can excavate blocks. Take any one row or column of blocks and add them to your supply. You can also place one block from your supply into the temple optionally claiming that you have completed one or more key cards. The first person to complete the designated amount of key cards for your player count wins the game. And that's how you play Block and Key. So we were actually able to get this to the table super recently and we enjoyed I enjoyed at least almost every aspect of this. One of the coolest things in my opinion is that the game board here, the towers kind of built from the game box. So this is the top of the box and the bottom of the box and you flip them over and put the pieces on to actually build your, your playing surface. Yeah, and on your turn you're going to do one of those two things, either take some of the blocks to add to your supply that you can use on later turns, or you can place a block, and when you do, there is a little key on the side facing you, uh, it's on all four sides for your four players, on what you're allowed to do when you place the blocks. Exactly. So the really interesting thing about this game is that even though you're playing like a 3D surface with the 3D blocks, it's all about what you're looking at via your 2D perspective, what side of the game board that you're on. So while I might place a block in front of me where I can see three sides up and down from my perspective, if Sarah's sitting on this side of the table, she actually can see view. a different perspective and that's going to help you complete your key cards as you continue throughout the game. Yeah, and there's three difficulties of those key cards. Um, you're given some easier starter cards and then there's two stacks that once you complete one, you'll draw some more and uh, you can select then, do you want the medium level, the suns, or the extra difficult one from the moon pile and uh, they have different point values depending on the difficulty. Yeah, this game also comes with uh, in-game bonus cards which is like a big win for me just thinking about games that I like to play because the in-game bonus kind of gives you that element of surprise like that comeback factor just in case it's a really tight game but you can always focus on that in-game bonus to get those extra points so I really enjoyed that aspect of the game. Yeah, uh, we played a game where I think the two of us were pretty far ahead with just the goals that we had completed but then another player was able to get quite a few points right at the end based on that end game bonus so it is something that depending on what blocks even they can see compared to what I uh, might be able to see can give you a lot of points right at the end of the game. Yeah, absolutely. I found, uh, I've been able to play a few times, so I found at the three player count, it's most interesting because the game box will tell you what size of the table to sit on, what perspective you have. And so with three players, obviously there's one side that's not open, meaning I might be sitting across from no one. So the other two players kind of are playing almost against each other, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I might put a block down that you might not be able to see, it just might be blocked from your perspective, where it seems like the player sitting on the side um, by himself almost gets to see every block, almost, that gets played, just depending on how you play. So I thought it was really, really interesting at the three player count, even though I had a great time with two or three or four players. So. Yep. One, a uh, couple other rules on placement. Um, when you place a block, it has to be taller than what is already out there if you're putting the face touching another block. So you have to have it taller. Otherwise, you have to set it at a diagonal off of that block if it's 
um, not taller than that portion. But um, when you're looking at it from your view, even a diagonal, it looks like those blocks are all lined up because you're just looking at the different rows in front of you. So it may not um, matter that way with what you're trying to do with your goals. But uh, there's also rules about how you can stack them on top of one another and um, having them overhanging, making bridges. Um, so there's other rules involved in just how you place the blocks. Yeah, and again, like we mentioned, this game, Block and Key from Inside Up Games, is headed to Kickstarter very soon, if not live, when you're watching this video. So if this is your type of game, you should absolutely go check it out. And of course, if you like the content we create over here at Tantrum House, we would love to hear from you in our comments, like our videos, watch our other stuff, send us emails, whatever you want to do. We would love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.